What's up guys, Constec here, back again for another video. And today we'll have a look at the Corsair Harpoon Pro. It's the 2019 iteration of the once popular Corsair Harpoon, released back in 2016. It retails for around 1,500 pesos, or 30 US dollars, which puts it in the budget category. Let's find out how it stacks up with today's standards and find out if it's still a worthy pick for 2021. Let's get started. Though Corsair is a well-known brand, their mice are hardly in the top recommendations. The Harpoon is their entry-level gaming mouse and I'm really interested how it holds up today. So the mouse weighs at 83 grams, measures 115 millimeters long, 60 millimeters wide at the middle, 68 at its widest point, and 40 millimeters at its highest point. It has a 1.8 meter non-braided USB cable and a USB connector which is not gold-plated. I like how the connector looks though since it looks unique with that Corsair logo. Flipping to the bottom, we can see the sensor lens at the middle, four mouse gates, and a small hole at the lower right side of the sensor. I'm not exactly sure what this is for. Probably a reset button? Like I said earlier, the Harpoon Pro was an iteration of the Harpoon. Thus, it improved on its predecessor by incorporating higher rated switches and a better sensor, while keeping the design and everything else the same. It's armed with a Pixar TMW3327 sensor, with a DPI range of 200 to 12,000, 125 to 1,000 Hz polling rate, tracking speed of 220 IPS, and 30G acceleration. Liftoff distance is slightly over 2 mm before the sensor completely loses track. It's a mid-range sensor so I would expect it to perform well. And of course for the usual tests, as you can see here it has zero angle snapping, and I did not notice any mouse jitter over the course of my testing. It tracks pixel by pixel and has zero acceleration issues. It also has no issues tracking very fast movements. No spin outs, no complaints here. The Harpoon Pro is a small right-handed mouse. Most people call them ergo mouse. The left side is raised and gradually slows down to the right, guiding the hand to a handshake-like grip. It has a very noticeable hump at the back and comfort grooves on both sides. The side grips are textured but not rubber. The clickers have grooves for the fingers which are really nice and the cable comes out from the left side which I guess is a design choice. Build quality is excellent as I would expect from a well-known brand. No flimsy buttons or anything loose when I try to shake it. It doesn't creak nor rattle and doesn't feel cheap at all. Despite the side grips not being rubber, I find them sufficient enough. Aside from the sides, the entire mouse has a matte finish which I always preferred. Weight is pretty balanced and the mouse glides just fine. It's not the smoothest but it's fine for the most part. The cable is not something I would call soft. And these days a lot of mice in this price range already have better cables. Comparing it with my G102 which has a similar non-braided rubber cable, the Harpoon Pro's cable just feels like a cheap one. If you don't position the cable well or use a mouse bungee, cable drag will likely be an issue when using this mouse. Now moving on to the buttons. The main buttons use Omron switches rated at 20 million clicks. They feel soft but snappy with just the right amount of tactile click and it has very minimal pre-travel. I like how the side buttons are placed. They are easily accessible and shaped just right to support the thumb while gripping the mouse. They are pretty light to actuate and feel crisp. The DPI button's probably the largest I've seen in a mouse so far but it's fairly okay, at least for me. However, if you grip the mouse like this, you'll be expecting some accidental presses if you're not too careful. The scroll wheel feels cheap but does the job. It has this annoying sound and feel when scrolling. I can still feel it when scrolling fast. It doesn't wobble though and it feels very intact. Decent tension as well when I press it.
Now let's talk about the shape. As you can see here, the mouth shape and grooves follows the hand allowing for that natural grip. Or at least that's what Corsair thinks. Now you see, while the shape is not exactly bad, I find the right side should have been a bit more rounded as opposed to being grooved inwards. This way, it would have been more natural to palm it. It doesn't have enough surface to accommodate my ring and pinky for gripping. Claw grip feels comfortable enough since the hump provides a support for the back of my palm and I only needed to rest the tip of my two fingers here to stabilize it. Although the mouse space is wide, the actual gripping part is narrower. I really think this mouse is just too narrow for an ergo mouse and the lack of gripping surface on the right side is just bothersome. Fingertip grip can be quite tricky since the mouse has a high profile. Most people using fingertip grip prefer low profile mice. For reference, my hand measures 17 by 10 centimeters and I can claw it just fine. Personally, I think it's the only type of grip that would work well on the Harpoon Pro. Other grips feel weird and uncomfortable for me. And for the recommended hand lengths, 14 to 16 centimeters for palm, 15 to 18 for claw, and 18 to 20 for fingertip. You can refer to the table for more details. Note that these are just estimates and my personal thoughts. They will not guarantee that you'll feel comfortable using it because of the weird shape, but you should be able to use it at the least. The Harpoon Pro is supported by Corsair's IQ software, which is one of the best in the market. It's very responsive and you can customize the mouse here in a variety of ways from RGB lighting, polling rates, DPI and sensitivity, and macros if that's your thing. RGB lighting is pretty simple. You only have the Corsair logo at the back of the mouse which also doubles as a DPI indicator. Just like every mouse I reviewed in this channel, I took the Harpoon Pro out for a spin and it's performed quite well. Though it took me a very long time to get used to its shape and adjust my grip, I can say it's a decent performer. The sensor and buttons are good. Though its high liftoff distance catches me off guard sometimes when making small adjustments, but that's just how it is. The cable's a real bummer too. All in all, it wasn't so bad and I think I'll probably buy this mouse 4 years ago. Comparing it with popular mice today, it's just outdated and doesn't look in line with 2021. For the same price of 1,500 pesos or around 30 US dollars, you can get a mouse with an equally good sensor, better cables, and most importantly, a much safer and acceptable shape. But yeah, the Harpoon, just like other ergo mice in the market, cater to a specific type of niche, so there's still some who would probably love its shape. Will I recommend the Harpoon Pro? Maybe no. Like I said, it's way behind other mice in its league and you're really not missing out on its shape since it's a hit or miss that you'll like it. Well, that's gonna be it for this video. Give it a like if you enjoyed it, dislike if you have to. Consider subscribing so you don't miss out on my next uploads and as always, thanks for watching and see you guys soon.